Let's see if the countdown actually works. Welcome to a special joint episode, Pit Lane Parlay and Stick to F1 podcast. We are going to do some news and random F1 topics with the Stick to F1 guys, Jason Martinez and Anthony Mangione. Gentlemen, how are we? Ready for Good. Baku. Yes. Ready for more racing this weekend. That's for sure. Yeah. Frenchy, doing well though, man. It's been, it's been it's been a good good Formula One season so far. It's been yeah. pretty some pretty cool storylines and you know some guys exceeding expectations, some guys in new rides that and you know aren't <laughs> meeting expectations, and you know a seven time world champion that is getting outscored by his teammate and out qualified by him as well. Yeah, George. I think that was like one of the things we hit on in our like very short. 15 minute episode last week was that George Russell was one of my like positive surprises for the year. Just for the fact that he's turned a not so great Mercedes car into Frenchie. Did we, we, I know we looked it up on Friday, but he's finished top five every race, right? Every race so far. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing so, consistency, man. Yeah. And I, and, my theory on that is also Mike that I think, it helps that he was in an, in many ways has recent experience in a, in a car that gave you know that could really give you some issues in the Williams. So for him, yep. I think it may be a little bit easier to adapt to a more finicky car than maybe it is for you know the seven-time world champion at least early on here. Oh yeah, I mean that Williams car still is is uh, is what it is. <laughs> no bueno. I was trying to think of like how to say that without like dropping too many curse words into an episode but uh yeah i mean although you know albon's gotten a lot out of that car yes yeah He's albon has done very well yeah latifi so, not so much yeah i think the, i think the williams is coming along a little bit latifi i think is going to be out of a ride at the end of the year if not before <laughs> um yep so uh, but you know albon he's a legit driver you know he's in that red bull program and then you know things didn't work out i mean had what happened in Brazil not happened to him when Hamilton took him off, he probably would not have lost that seat. He'd been a race winner. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I think that team's coming along a bit. They, Jos Capito is running the team, and I think they're moving in the right direction. Are they going to be up there with the, the big boys anytime soon? I don't think so, but, I mean, they're much more respectable than they were. So I'm going to let you guys bring up whatever topics we want for this first half. I know you're going to do your own – Baku preview uh, afterwards, so French and I will do the same thing afterwards and make our own predictions. Uh, but just a reminder for everybody who's in our Grid Rival Fantasy League, make sure you check your lineups because they reset and you have until, I think, the end of the day, a Friday to set your lineups for the weekend. So this is the only time I'm giving a courtesy reminder all year, so I stopped seeing the messages in the in the grid rival chat of why did my lineup reset. So uh, set your lineups. No, it's Friday at 10 a.m. Friday at 10 a.m. Thank oh, you. Man. You got to get it done before quality. Um, actually, where I want to start is I want to ask you guys a question because you know one of the top storylines in F1 is the very disappointing season of Daniel Ricciardo. Yeah. At, at McLaren in year two, never really got his handle on that car last year. Had a surprise win at Monza after winning that sprint race. But when you, you know, Hamilton and Verstappen go out to turn two there as well, it's Verstappen's car on top of them, so that maybe that <laughs> helps. But I think he earned yeah. the win anyway. But he has looked even more disappointing this year. And I know one of the guys that's testing with McLaren and Zach Brown's bringing him uh, for a test is Colton Herta. What can you tell us about Colton Herter? What can you tell the F1 audience about him? Frenchie, you want to start? Yeah, I think Colton Herter has been pretty amazing to watch. I mean, just starting from, I, I started following his career when he stepped up to Indy Lights, um, which is kind of like, I guess, the F2 for IndyCar, basically. And he didn't win the championship, but he injured himself at one point, I believe, and then still pretty much fought it out with Pato Award, who's kind of another... I mean, Another they're both yeah, generational talents. One, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Colton, I would say, is bad fast. Like, he he has the raw speed, and what we haven't seen from him so far is the race craft. He's been making some kind of mistakes, I would, you know, like rookie-ish kind of mistakes, and he's been in IndyCar for, what is it, Mike, about three years now? I think this is year four, yeah. Okay, so 
he when he has a good day, he's like so far out ahead of the field, it's unbelievable. But then there are some days where he just ends up in the wall or makes a silly mistake trying to make it too aggressive a pass. And it's just like he's still, what is he, 21 years old? And you, you kind of remember how young this guy really is. And I know that... Finish the, the race if you want to win Exactly. The race. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what we're still missing a little bit from him. But I think if you iron out those rough edges, he's going to be pretty much unbeatable. It's do like, you do you think he's pressing at all? Knowing, I mean, because I mean, with everything with him getting the seat, with you know, obviously getting the seat fitting with McLaren and everything, is there? You think he's potentially pressing and trying to push a little too hard? I don't know. I honestly don't think that has any impact on his mentality. But it's like going back to Nashville last year. He led two thirds of the race. He was going to reclaim the re lead of the race as pit stops worked their way through. And just pushed it too hard and went into the wall. And then he did that in Long Beach this year? Yeah. Question mark? Well, none of the street course. So it's like, he's he's got the talent. And I, and I don't think the McLaren thing actually is, like, in the back of his mind when he's in the race car. He just, just, just needs to rein it in, like, just, a just like, a little bit. And he'll be fine. Because I, I think he's he's got the talent. And I think he could succeed in F1 if he just, you know, is able to just kind of think about the points. You know, you might not be able to pull out a win or, you know, it might be, you know, you have a bad pit stop or, you're, you know, what hap what's happened to Colton multiple times this year is the team has underfueled his car no. by, for, by accident. So, and more than once this year. So it's like, you know, you just got to take your lumps and know that, like, shit happens and just instead of getting angry and like driving bad fast like he did in long beach where he went from like eighth to third or something like that like in one sequence just just take what you can get and don't end up in the wall and he'll be okay yeah f one's so much like a game of chess it's yeah. about you know not the next lap but it's about incremental gains to me though he looks like a guy i know lando norris knows him well and they raced prior um, together and Lando said he is like mad rapid in high speed yeah. corners. <laughs> he's, he's like that's the thing. Like the guy's got. He just said he could never match his telemetry in high speed corners. Yep. Is that just a big set of balls on him, or what is it? What's the deal with that? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. yeah he looks like, he like has a no star fear. to me too. Like he looks the part, right? Go ahead. Frankie. He's the ultimate California kid. Yeah. So he'd be a perfect representation for America and F1, I think, because he's got that chill vibe. He's got like the, the chucks on with the jeans and the black T-shirt, and he's a <laughs> punk drummer, right? He's got a punk band that he's the drummer for. So he's kind of got that like skater California guy vibe that I think would be really interesting to see mesh with the F1 crowd. Uh, here's the thing, Jason. Here, we'll I use a that. hockey analogy for you, and this one will be a good one. He's kind of like Tre Tre Trevor Zegras. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I see there a lot of flair. Yeah, a lot of flair. Kind of reminds mm -hmm. me in terms of his, 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 you know, his images and everything. I was like, if I had a hockey reference for this kid, I'd say he looks like Trevor Zegers and probably the way you're describing his sort of style of play or style of driving in this case when we talk about Zegers' style of play, obviously. Well, I mean, look, like so much of getting a seat at these levels, too, is about sponsorship. And to me, with the popularity of motorsport and F1, in the United States, I imagine there's a lot of sponsors that want to get on board and, and get a piece of this growth and this explosion that's happening. So I imagine he could come with a lot of money as well. Yeah, I, you know, when 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 we originally broke the, well, the or, the original Andretti to F1 story in the fall last year, part of that was Gainbridge, which is his IndyCar sponsor, and. Indianapolis Motor Speedway sponsor, Indy 500 sponsor, and I think they're sponsoring something else in IndyCar later this year. But their parent, it's either them or their their parent company, which is Guggenheim, yeah, which is like trillions of dollars in in assets, was part of that original F1 deal. I don't think it is at this point, but I'd imagine like if somebody like that is like, hey, we'll go to F1 if Colton goes to F1. There's probably somebody out there looking at Colton Herta right now going, okay, if he goes to McLaren or if this Andretti thing ever actually happens, you know, we're, we're coming over with you guys. Well, the other thing too, you look at it and there's going to be three F1 races in the States yeah. next year. 
Vegas is coming on in November of 2023. You already have Miami now with one race under the, under the belt and Austin, at, you know, at Coda. So you got three American races. It's a great opportunity. So I imagine, you know, that's part of it. One of the other things I wanted to ask you guys, you know, watching Monaco last week, I don't know if there's a comp in IndyCar for a track that is totally outdated. <laughs> and I don't know what the – like me and Ant talked about, there's nothing you can really do because it's a city. Like it's Monte Carlo, <laughs> you know. You can't just do a wide – you know, road widening and make a passing zone. It's Monaco. That's part of the charm. But the race really leaves a lot to be desired. I think there wasn't many overtakes. And if there was five, then Gasly had four of them when he went to the intermediates. And yeah. Everybody else, or when he went to the softs and everybody else was on intermediates. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, I don't know if there's a comp in IndyCar, but I don't know even know what to do with Monaco going forward because just watch qualifying and there's your finishing order. First off. Unless, well, unless you uh, screw up the pit stops. Yeah, yeah. Unless you pull a Ferrari, which we that's what we we, we, we said last week. Somehow, and and I read this earlier today. It's like on a track where you can't pass, Ferrari bungled a one-two starting position. So, but anyway, God, I'm trying to think. You know, you could say it's it's not a direct comparison at all. But when when they redid Phoenix for NASCAR, which is an oval, so it's you know Phoenix is pretty brutal. Texas. When they again, because of NASCAR, put down that traction compound, it's pretty brutal. But it actually, was pretty good this year. So, but it, it, is there one that's directly predicated on your qualifying position in IndyCar? Like Sonoma, they can take over at Sonoma, and same with Watkins Glen. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think you're going to get something. It's hard to pass at Laguna, but yeah, Laguna is yeah. tough, Laguna, but it's not impossible. Second. Yeah. yeah. Laguna. Yeah, it's I think awful. the biggest problem is, is like, uh, I don't know, Frenchie told me this, like the current F1 car is as long oh, yeah. as a Chevy Suburban. Like yeah. that's, that's insane. They're eight meters long. Yeah. yeah it's just wide. too much. Yeah. The like wing, if you look at an old now. F1 car, even from like the early 2000s uh -huh. compared to now, it's a good three feet longer, maybe. Yeah. It's a Fiero compared to a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I saw a Fiero today on the road. I was behind when I was like, oh, my God, I forgot about those little things, little two-seaters. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty sick, though. Um, but, you know, Monaco is what it is, I guess. I mean, they're in negotiations right now. I don't know how they move forward and what they do. You hate to see it leave the calendar because of the history. Like, the history of motorsport means something. And I just, you can't make the car smaller again. You can't ever go backwards in that way. So I don't know what they're going to do, but um, it, it was still a pretty fascinating race, I thought. And to, to see Checo win that race, Sergio Perez, I picked him, by the way, yeah. felt pretty damn good. I mean, other than winning his home Grand Prix in Mexico, I was, Ant and I are big fans of Checo. Yeah. And we were Sir. both very happy that he won that race. Hopefully you didn't see in the trouble he got after the race. Oh, yeah. What happened after the race? About him dumping, uh, getting people he, thrown in the pool. He, no, he had a he no. Had a, he go ahead. First. He had a close, uh, close encounter. Let's say with a fan that um, got someone caught on camera that uh, maybe his wife wasn't going to be too happy about. Let's just say that. Oh, good on Checo. <laughs> bueno. It looked. Someone caught the picture. It might have been just the right time, but yeah. Yeah. When you saw what they captured, they could definitely take that out of context. Mm. I see. Gotcha. Yeah, he's out of country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. It's like, what is this, Vegas? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What happens at Monaco stays at Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was, you know, good for him. I'm happy. Like, if somebody, even though I, I put money on Leclerc winning that race, if there was going to be somebody who wasn't Leclerc winning that race, I'm, I'm, I can live with Checo. Well, especially after what happened at, at Spain, right? Yeah. where yeah. he was not yeah. happy about having the seed position not once but twice, citing a different strategy, which was – there was a little bit of bullshit in that because he was faster at the one time on his strategy. And if he if they would have let him through Max at that point, then maybe he could have been in position to make that strategy work. And he wasn't happy about it. He said, we got to talk about it. He, I thought he handled it really professionally yeah. in the way he dealt with the media with it and said, look, I wasn't happy about it. We're going to have to have a conversation and come to an understanding, and they did. 
and then he comes out in the next race and gets the win. Now, Josh Verstappen wasn't very happy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. after that race. What a yeah. dirt bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Uh... Again. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Seriously. As soon as I read that, I was just like, "Yeah, bad." Timing. You know, you want the guy. The guy literally defended your kid into a world championship last year. That in that race, Jacko doesn't do that. He does not win the world championship because he's not in position. He had no business. Lewis had that race in a rocking chair mm-hmm. and had the eighth title in the bag. And if it wasn't for the def- any of the defensive maneuvers by Perez, your kid isn't a world champ. Well, Max closes that gap enough so that. Hamill can take a free pit stop. Precisely. Yeah. That's that's, that's why he wins the championship because of that. Again, they may be, again there is, I think this also stems as well. I'm not turning this into a whole Red Bull section, but we might as well discuss it. Um, the dis- this seems the, dis- the dissatisfaction with how the car is dialed in for Max versus Sergio, who seems to have, unlike last year, Sergio's the one struggling with the car. This year, Sergio says this car is really fitting into his driving style and. You know, the points have gotten tighter as a result, so... He's only 15 points back. In security, I don't know. He's 15 points back, and it makes you wonder, like, being Verstappen's teammate is not easy. From a perform- <laughs> Just from a performance standpoint. From, yeah, from right? every level. You yeah. having to hang out with Yas in the garage. <laughs> and he's always around, right? <laughs> he so just the, lurks. The yeah. goading dad. It's the whole thing. It's Earl Woods. So it's hard enough to be his teammate from a competitive standpoint. And it just makes you wonder, is it a self-fulfilling prophecy that nobody can be his teammate long-term? And I'll also have one other thing to the mix, Jace. Also the fact that Sergio is very, very popular with his crew. He always has been going back to his time with yeah. Force India, prior to Force India. You know, what happened with, race, you know, obviously the racing point, what happened to him. He's, I, and it's, I, I wonder if that dynamic sort of if the one side of the garage is maybe a, li, a bit on edge when it comes to Max, that Serge is <laughs> sort of more like kind jovial. of jovial and, and in with his crew uh, a bit more and dialed in a little bit more. And that may be something that is a concern in terms of team dynamics. Yeah, I think Max, <laughs> like Lewis Hamilton, is very demanding. Like the DRS button thing. And they're like, Max, <laughs> just press the button once. You know he was kicking the living shit out of that button when it wasn't opening. <laughs> it's like me when my computer freezes, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was, like, wailing on it. <laughs> it just wasn't working. Then it ended up working for him. But anyway, um, so it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see. And I'd love to see the F1 guys come over and just do an exhibition at, like, Indianapolis or something. I want to see them on an oval or, you know, something like that. Just to see what those cars can do on one yeah, of those Max, tracks. Like, could you see him at Talladega? Some of those guys seem a little bit uh, nervous to come over uh, to, to, to do to do the oval and to uh, to do the five hundred. Well, Grosjean That's... scared to death of it. Of the yeah, he, yeah, he he's he's caught on. Um, he wasn't so good in Indy, but um, he where did Grosjean race last year? Gateway, and he was he did pretty good. He did pretty good, but yeah, I mean, listen, I get it. It's 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 a daunting task, but I would love to see them just come to like, uh, like you said earlier, like Watkins Glen or something. Where maybe it's not even an official race because I don't think Watkins Glen is up to F one standards for like garages and Back and all that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would be cool to see. I mean, I would fly back east for that in a heartbeat just to go. I want to yeah. see IROC come back, have them put them all in the same car and do <laughs> yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff yeah. again. IROC was Rock awesome. Was awesome. Yeah, I used to love it. that. Yes, I remember watching like and Michael Andretti, yeah. or maybe Mario Andretti, but probably Michael Andretti when he was racing in NASCAR, and you know, you had like Tony Stewart that was doing it, and all these different guys, you know, in the IROC series. Maybe Dale Earnhardt was in it at the time. And I, I think they got some F1 guys. I think like a, I, if I, Emerson Fittipaldi might have done it one time. And those were awesome. Those were fun because it, just race car drivers, no pressure, but they all want to win. And they're all in an absolutely equal automobile. I think that's cool. Yeah, that was that was so fun. Yeah, I remember watching those I, races. I missed the I, – I used to watch those like before. Like we, we would, I don't know, put them on tape, I guess. Because this the is HS definitely – yeah, Sorry, and we would gentlemen. watch. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to like give people. Everybody already calls me old enough on this show as it is, so I'm trying not to like 
give in too much but yeah like and i would watch it like before like a sunday indy car race like it would just be like a full day of racing for me yeah it's great i wish they would do that again uh what do you guys think for baku this week i love this race since they've been there this will be what now the fifth time there the first year it was it wasn't called they weren't calling it baku it was a european grand prix if i recall yeah it had a 2016 general euro name yeah and then they went to the Azerbaijan Baku Grand Prix in 2017. So Azerbaijan was 2016, 17, 18, 19, 22 and then they didn't race in 20 there. Yeah, no, yeah, because that was COVID and they yeah. did last year. So last year was the first one since yeah, since 19. Last yeah. year was the Verstappen tire failure year, right? Yep. And, and Sergio yeah, went all, on to win it because all, of brake magic. Happened, all blew out. Yeah. And then, uh, then brake magic happened to Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis went straight on to turn one, kind of like I did on the cold mediums in my league race the other day. I was oh, you should, when I yelled when that happened. She was you like, should have seen my happened? league race last night. It was pathetic. Where, where are you league racing, Mike? Uh, well, we're not. We're, we're a little less fancy. We're, we have a, the PLP Xbox League. Uh, and I was dead last. Well, I wasn't dead last. I was dead last in the finishing cars. So, uh, where do we race? What game are you racing on? Uh, F1. On F121? Uh, F121, yeah. the worst F1 game ever. Yeah, it's been a nightmare if you want to play online. Um, yeah. Let me ask you. I'll give you my uh, handle and uh, add yeah. it because, I'll, because I race on Xbox as well. Okay, yeah. I have I've a race tonight in the CSRL League, but I'm demanding that I join a new league that's called Never Wet League. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> no variable weather, no yep. wets. I actually I the, suck. The rain races are the only ones that's when where we like, tend to do well. Yeah, people are like, wow, you look good. You look good today. I'm like, yeah, I guess. But you got uh, spun on the opening lap last night at Brazil. Like, through yeah, it was in turn fault. one, you spun. Yeah, so he yeah. had to make his way back from that. I and then I spun again. Third in Singapore. A Brazilian, uh, you know, deluge, man. Oh, it yeah. The equator, I, man. I, it. I, I qualified third at Singapore, which you know is a very difficult ro- yeah. streak, you know, track. And I'm having a great race. I'm in second place. I'm in great position. I'm on mediums. I'm good to go. Rain comes in. <laughs> totally fucked me. Five, ten minutes later, getting heavier. I'm like, all right, I got one more lap on the intermediates before I go to full wets. Yep, in the wall, done. Tire was <laughs> in my ear. For God's sakes, come on. Oh, I was what, so what pissed. What runoff? Do you, there's some runoff at the beginning of it, but after that, it's not like, where I was. <laughs> not, no, I know where you probably were at. <laughs> yep, there was no I, runoff there. I, I know exactly where you're talking about. And uh, yeah, I'm hopeful. I mean, I know you guys are interviewing the F122 people so i'm Correct. super yeah, we're, we're in final arrangements on yeah that. i'm yeah. super excited to see that i really hope that it's better because this game is so it's just so depressing i just have never gotten a handle on it, it makes me question my decision making every monday night when we race and uh <laughs> what, you haven't gotten a handle on it from a pace standpoint or from just like online issues i mean the online issues they're definitely prevalent but it's, you know, some tracks, like, some random curbs just pop up and kick you sideways, and you're not expecting it. Yeah, Mons is a lot it's, different when it comes to the curbs. Yeah, there's like just that, a few yeah. that, like, Brazil last night, like, I was okay, but, like, last night was, like, lots of self-inflicted mistakes. It was really, like, it was nobody else's fault. Nobody wrecked me. I spun myself twice, and then somehow I ended up, there was like a couple, there was a yellow flag and then a, a safety car and then a VSC. And somehow I ended up a lap down. I'm like, all right, you know, and we kept going around in circles under yellow. And I was like, I'm just get, I'm getting out of the way. I, I pit like three times under that safety car just to get like all the way to the back. And then I ended up two laps down in the end anyway. So it was just like, yeah, it was I'm one of those nice, track. like the, the race got done and I shut my Xbox off and went immediately into my bed. If you get the, the first sector hooked up there and make that left after yeah. the, you can just get great lap time. And I've, I've like cracked the code on that one, but there's still some that I just can't, I just can't seem to get there. Like Monaco, I don't even fuck with. Nope. I skip Monaco. The one yeah. game that got, cause I have a PlayStation. So the one game that was somewhat good at the beginning and I don't know what they held GT, the new GT, uh, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. Yeah. yeah. We used to love that. We had all the PlayStation. Unplayable now. The handling model on it. I don't know what they did with the most oh, wow. update. The handling model is bonk. 
And they wow. better do something. They, uh, all I know is Kaz and the crew, they better do something because – I had those cars. Di- I, I had my cars relatively dialed in in that game. Um, I don't have a wheel. Jason's got a full wig. I, I, I have a, I have a PS. I use my controller. Yeah, we use the controller for Xbox. Yeah. And uh, just... Then again, I'm not going to give you my handle. Oh, <laughs> I'm don't, don't, don't right be a snob. <laughs> <laughs> I got this sim rig right over there. It's in pieces right now, but oh, F1 nice. sim. I'm all in on it. I love it. Yeah. I have no freaking life. I'm 50, and I'm like hanging out on a Friday night with a bunch of like. I don't even know how old they are, but I do hear bong hits happening quite often in the background, <laughs> and sometimes a screaming kid along with it. <laughs> I don't think we have that gnarly, but we definitely have the first one or drinks being drank. You hear that the, cracking of the can? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Drinking and driving, kids. <laughs> well, get ready for twenty-two because it's coming out in less than a month. We'll have, like you said, we're gonna have Lee Mather on and uh, PJ Tierney once again. Give us the download on the new game and F1 life and all that stuff. And the other part, if you like taking curbs, you're not going to like the new game because you're not going to be able to take them. <laughs> you just, yeah. Are so, yeah, <laughs> no you just can't, can't, can't drive on that, curb. The cars are so low. You're going to rip that floor up like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah. I'll be jacking up the ride height. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm going to have to rethink my setup strategy for next year. But I, I, last night I took a fellow competitor strategy from like the time trials and it's actually not bad. I just she took a setup I, from time trial. Yeah. If you if you have like your Xbox friends and you load like and they do a time trial, you can just snag their setup. Yeah. Uh, and that's typically what I do on weeks like yesterday, where I was you know I was at the doctor in the morning and then busy. I'm like I don't have time to practice. I did four practice laps and took a nap last night before. Yeah, before I always the take race. a time trial setup too, and then I tweak it for a race yeah. setup. Yeah, exactly yeah. what we typically do. Yeah. But back to Baku, I'm excited for it. I this all it's typically, especially the last like three or four years, has been pretty good. There's always something wild that happens, whether it's you know Leclerc going into the wall in the castle section, or you know oh. tires blowing out last year. It's a it's it's racy in certain parts. It's tight in certain parts. It's a it's a pretty cool layout. Yeah. I like it. I I do. You know that one straightaway in sector three to take you to start finish. Yeah, that's the longest straight on the F1 calendar, and DRS is really powerful there because it's a long DRS zone too. Um, and there's like technical sections there, especially in that middle sector. You mentioned the castle section. So I think it's really challenging for the drivers. Uh, I know Mercedes has already said going in that they fear they're going to have the same pace issues that they had at Monaco at Azerbaijan. Yeah. They could be sandbagging there. I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, I think it's going to be. Case otherwise, this I would say this was last season. Sure, this year. Yeah, I think I think the, I think I think it's legit. Are real. I think there feels. Their fears I wonder are real. with the long straight, are you going to see porpoising become an issue again this weekend? Very well, could great could. point. On, yep, on a especially for like that Mercedes. That, yeah. mm-hmm. And if because if you bring the right height up, you're going to create more drag, and you're going to lose top line speed. Yeah, and this makes me think this is going to be a really big Red Bull weekend because. And I don't mean just Red Bull. I mean Alpha too, because of that straight line speed, and those two DRS zones are really long. And I just don't know that a, a car can get to you and overtake you in those technical sections. And the overtaking is going to have to happen on on those long straights. And I think Red Bull can fend it off from a DRS standpoint, but Ferrari's got no chance of fending it off from Red Bull from a straight line speed standpoint. So I think I it's think a big weekend for. For Red Bull. What would be for... wild is we have multiple wrecks and Yuki Sonoda wins the race this time. <laughs> <laughs> it works. That one car, though. <laughs> yeah. I could live with that. There's some guys where I like really don't want to see them win, but I could live Lance with Stroll. Yuki. Uh, yeah. I mean, could you imagine Yuki on the, the post-race press conference when he wins? His TV interview would be unreal. Yeah. Oh, He's yeah. kind of a loose yeah. cannon. <laughs> yeah, they would dial him in last year a little bit. Amazing there. Too, like set like Vettel, you know. But again, circumstances in the last race got Vettel up the ladder in that one. But, yeah, you know, or Fernando Alonso coming out of nowhere because he also off that red off off the red flag start uh, jumped how many spots last year? Yeah, he gave look, out, look out for Alpine this weekend too. They have good straight line speed. They they could be a factor in that. And they've had like in practice and in qualifying, they've had real pace. But then they get into the race, and it's not that the pace isn't there. I think Fernando for him, it's just been. Awful luck. Awful. When he got hit by Mick and lost 
three quarters of his side pod, you know, in lap two or whatever. Yeah, Mick could be out of a, the... out of a seat here too. You seeing some of the stuff that Gunther Steiner saying? They're cost. He's cost them about four million dollars already this year. I know, but I, I would also say at the same time, Jace, I think it's also just I think this is Gunther waking him up, German, doing a German to German kick in the ass here, just mm-hmm. to kind of get him, you know, in year two, you know, in in year two to be pointed in the right direction. The question is, you know, at this point, where's where else is Mick going? I mean, he'd have to completely change. You know, he's a Ferrari driver. I mean, unless. Vettel retires and he replaces Vettel at Aston, which I don't think is I don't know, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, Alpha. I mean, they no, just Alpha, I don't think Joe they and they got Joe Guan Yu and, and obviously Bodas. Oh, they, no, they got that sweet. They got that sweet Chinese revenue coming in there. Yeah, they're not going to do <laughs> Joe's anything. Going nowhere. I mean, if you lose the seat at Haas, you should lose the seat in F one. That should be a rule. <laughs> right. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I, to me, that should What's be that? a rule. That's like a relegation <laughs> in Euro soccer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think Mick Mick had some really good qualifying efforts, has had some really good qualifying efforts this year, and it just hasn't translated to race results. It's almost like Russell, like, two years ago when he started to turn a corner, except Mick is making a lot more mistakes in the race that have cost a lot of money. Nick's had two two races recently though where he would have finished in the points. Yep. The wreck at Miami with Vettel took him out of ninth. And then I think it was was it at Spain? Where he was in position no, it wasn't Spain, I think it was prior to that. It yeah, was love before, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean Maybe so not, he's I don't remember. Two opportunities here. He's got a car that's much more competitive this year, and he's put it in the wall when he's had an opportunity to score points and hasn't done it. So um I, the remainder of the season, I'm looking, there's only seven races in. Yeah. So we shall see. Anything else, guys? So I did want to ask you about, yeah. Mike, I mentioned this earlier, that this is not an F1 question, but we are going. We are heading into Le Mans this weekend. So I yeah. wanted to you know, pick your brain about the experiences of covering a 24-hour race. Uh, what that was like at Daytona for you. So... This this year in January, this past January, was my second uh, Rolex 24. And both times I've left the race going, I never want to cover a 24-hour race again. Only to get, like, a couple months later and be like, I want to be back covering it again. So, like, I, I, I will fully admit today, because I was thinking about it after you texted me that. And I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of want to be in Daytona again in a couple Itchy, months. Um, but it's... It's really, it, it sucks. It's hard. It's like you either go into it going, I'm going to stay up for 24 hours or you commit to like 16 hours and getting like a couple hours of sleep. And I like this year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out to the car. I'm going to take a nap. And I got out to the car and, you know, the all the lights are on. The cars are driving by. You, you, so I, I slept and I'll, I'll share the picture again in the media center like with like three chairs and i just like spread across the chairs from like i don't know maybe one o'clock to four o'clock ish in the morning and your back hurts and you're miserable we went through i think i probably had five cups of coffee and like four monster sugar-free monsters and i ate like shit all all morning you know i went to wawa and got like four bags of chips and a couple bags of skittles or something like it's a disgusting event (laughs) like i mean it's truly like not a proud moment to be like, oh yeah, like I had that and uh, Chick Fil A and some pizza or something at midnight. Like it's just, you just feel uh, like shit after. Yeah, like you get home and it's like three days of recovery. And I mean, there are some guys like, you know, shout out like Mark Urban and and Jamie Price who you know, do videography and photography, like who do all twenty. Oh, I don't think Jamie did twenty four hours this year. I'm pretty sure they caught him sleeping. But like Mark was up, all, did all twenty four hours, and then like you know, had dinner after the race and, you know, was like, I mean, I'm sure he was tired, but he was still alive. And I mean, I, you know, I tapped out at, I tried to tap out at like 10 PM. It's, it's tough, but I mean, it's really cool to, to be out on a racetrack. It was a little difficult this year. Cause it was like literally 32 degrees at four o'clock in the morning. Like you're trying to go out and like take some, take some photos, get some, some audio of the cars and, you can't even take your hands out of the gloves because it's just so cold. But, like, I remember a couple of years ago, 
Yeah, I, I covered it in 2020, right before COVID hit. And being out on pit lane at like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, it's 43 degrees. There's nobody there. It's just race cars driving around you and just being like, this is the most peaceful thing on the planet right now for me. It's just race cars and no people. Uh, so it's 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 quite an experience if you can cover a 24 hour race. I did it 20 uh, in 2021. We weren't they were only allowing a certain number of media, so we actually covered it from home. And I had like my Twitch stream running for literally all 24 hours. Wow! And I think I made it like 19 hours. I mean, it's a little bit easier when you're at home because you're not running around, but it's really fun. I'm excited. I hope, you know, because I'll be in Road America for IndyCar this weekend. So I don't know how much I'll get to watch, but definitely like Saturday night or Saturday morning, maybe like in the media center. And then Saturday night into Sunday morning, I'll try to catch as, as much as I can because, I mean, Lamont is awesome. It's such I, it's definitely like a bucket list race to get to at some point in my life. I think for you, Jason, it would be Spa, right? Yeah. Spa oh, yeah. would be up there. Spa I would yeah, be I agree. Too, right on the beach. Yeah. But Spa's got more history. You know, to, to be, sit at the top of Eau Rouge and Radion would just be to see those cars flat out coming over the hill, going right and then have to go left at that speed, I think would just be like insane to see in person. I would love that. Yeah. I, yeah. that would be in I've my F1 mountains. bucket list. Yeah. Or 24 when they do the 24 and it's pit and it's in the forest, you know, yeah. in, in the dark or, or Nurburgring for that matter, you know, the Nurburgring 24, which is just, I don't know how that, that, how that's done on that track is yep. just... I, I've never covered that one, obviously, remotely. Um, but when is that? Is that coming up later in the summer? No, Has it passed? Well, Spa's got to be... I think it's closer to the summer, yeah, because Nurburgring, I thought 24H at Nurburgring didn't happen already. It might have. Frenchie, do you have I any idea? It did. I don't think Spa 24 has happened yet. I think it did happen already. It did. I thought so. Because I remember seeing a car. It was a whoever was the winning car last year wrecked. I think in this year. Yeah. Was, like, I have trouble keeping track of all the racing series I'm I mean, talking so about. Many in terms of that, yeah, yeah. it's a tough to keep track of. For sure. Well, boys, well, this was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you hopping on, and and we we'll we should we should do this more than once a year. No doubt, and we'll get yeah, and we'll get sure, a little actually, uh, yeah. I mean, more than a biannual, but make it you know. Yeah. Check in. Yeah, when, I like that. When 22 cool. comes out, F-122 and cross-platform, we'll do the pit lane parlay versus stick to F-1 lobby. Okay, I like that. Mike, we can do I'll that. Be, Mike, you and I will be handling the back row while Jason <laughs> does laps around us pretty much. We'll, go to, we'll go to Jetta. Jason. Oh, oh, go to well. Jetta. Of course you want to go to Jetta. You want to I'll, be, I'll be last one place. In the world oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, not me. Um, I'm probably in the bottom 1% in uh, – Jetta. I didn't crash there this year when we we raced there. I don't know, maybe a month ago. I didn't crash. I mean, I didn't come close to didn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm an animal but, uh, at that track. I've got the rhythm of sector one down. Love it. Uh, I I'm a little Miami, jealous. Though. I am curious about. It's how gonna be fun in the yeah. game. Yeah, I think yeah. it'll be so fun to, first, to play. It's gonna be a, just a pain in the. I just. A yeah, pain in the ass going carnage. Especially under the overpass. I mean, you put a double chicken under the under an overpass. Yeah. The hell? Yeah. Very bizarre. Yeah. Very bizarre. <laughs> Boys, right, thanks guys. for doing this. Yeah, no thanks. problem. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All right. Nice see you guys. you guys. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We'll just.